The name of the street is Bukit Bintang. And uh, down there is the monorail. The overhead passage is the monorail, which makes for great communications, uh, great transportation network around KL, Kuala Lumpur. There's a very short history of uh, Kuala Lumpur. It was originally a tin mining settlement. The legendary Yap Aloy became the third Chinese chieftain. The British resident Sir Frank Swetnam developed the first city plan. The Federated Malay States FMS was formed. Kuala Lumpur was chosen as, as a capital and became the center of British colonialism with Frank Swettenham as its first resident. Here's an important one. Um, Kuala Lumpur was occupied by the, China, the Japanese army from January 1st January 11th to 1942 to August 15th, 1945, a period which halted the economy. When Japan surrendered after the atomic bombing of Hiroshima, the British returned to Kuala Lumpur. They gained independence in 1957. In 1972, Kuala Lumpur was granted city status and in 1974 oh, Kuala Lumpur was uh, firmly detached from its mother state of Selang Roar and called the federal territory governed directly by the Malaysian federal government and that's how it used to look because Kuala Lumpur literally it means muddy estuary and it was found at the confluence of the Gombak River and the Klang River. So that's what it used to look like. Interesting ad uh, for the HTC Evo 3D. Pretty impressive. And uh, just to prove I'm in Kuala Lumpur in KL, that's what it says there. Here's a, a huge uh, wall map of uh, KL, and uh, we are located uh, near number five there uh, on Bukit Bin Bintang. Right there, it's where the hotel 
was we changed hotels uh, this morning and we're now on the Yalan Book and Bingtang. It's just all the same name. Our second hotel, our first being the uh, Sky Hotel, which we uh, paid $70 for approximately. Our second hotel is the Hotel Iris Garden. It's also in the Bintang area near Bintang Walk. And uh, the price of that hotel is about $50. And it's pretty nice as these photos on the front of the hotel show. The name of the street is Bukit Bintang. And uh, down there is the monorail. It's the overhead passage is the monorail, which makes for great communications, uh, great transportation network around KL, Kuala Lumpur. If you get tired of all the great food uh, that there is in Southeast Asia, and uh, perhaps I speak tongue-in-cheek somewhat, because uh, if you're not really into Asian food, it's a tough go. Well, there's always things like A&W and McDonald's. Don't laugh. McDonald's is a great place to get the, a cup of American coffee. Coffee in, uh, in these uh, Asian countries uh, tends to be incredibly sweetened. It's like they, they dump uh, two spoonfuls of uh, sugar in it and it's tough to take. So McDonald's is good and A&W's is good for an American coffee for a dollar. A very cool restaurant in Kuala Lumpur is the Sahara Tent. Southeast Asia is the durian. This one is Malaysia high quality. They look like this. Oh, durian, yeah. Are they good? Are they good to eat? Good. Uh, 18 ringgits for a kilogram. You cannot eat them in the hotel room because they uh, smell. Yeah, okay. The pavilion uh, is a uh, KL's uh, most modern shopping center, from what I read last night. Some condo buildings right behind it. It's huge, uh, and uh, it is uh, our way to get to the uh, Petronas Towers, see how it works.